Hey, before we move too far past this, and we have a lot to go over today, but an interesting question, just because it ties into the Midnight Express that came in, I wanted to ask you. This was sent to cornydrivethrough at gmail.com from Chuck Nolan Jr. El right Every time. Illyria? Illyria, Ohio. If Jim could go back and accomplish one, would he rather have had a proper match with the Rock and Roll Express at Starcade 87 or properly finish their run with the Horsemen? Oh, good Lord. Uh, properly finish the run with the Horsemen. Because it was a disappointment that the we never got to have the thing about this, of all the Midnight Express matches that people remember, said this was the best with Fantastics, or that was Southern Boys, or Midnight and Rock and Roll drew more money than anything in the fucking 80s, or whatever. We never had a good match at Starcade. Right. Scaffold, well, it was the... Scaffold is a different thing. Well, 85 was the street fight, and that was... that was, it was a It was a good match if you could ignore the gimmick that Ronnie Garvin was in, Miss Atlanta Lively, and good Lord. But a street fight with the Midnight Express against Jimmy Valiant and Miss Atlanta Lively. The match itself, everybody's bleeding. The shit looked good. They're fucking, you know, they're ripping off the tuxedos, whatever the fuck. But it was still Ronnie dressed as a woman because of that I don't know who pitched that. I don't know if it's Ronnie pitched it to Dusty, Dusty pitched it to Ronnie. I don't know what. Ronnie Garvin has always claimed that he pitched it. He's always complained publicly about Dusty Rose and Dusty's booking. They had a big falling out, I guess. But he's always insisted that the two times he dressed as a woman were his idea. Yeah. and Because remember the second time he knocked out J.J. Well, no, J.J. Dillon was hiding in the closet or about to, and he knocked out Flair dressed as Precious. Yes. And well, Miss Atlanta Lively came back and did something else too at some point. But and I mean, you know, I've told you when he when Ronnie first day he did that in Atlanta at Techwood at the TBS studios, dressed up in that gimmick, and he's got the big hair and the tight dress and the fake snavitzes and all the makeup on and dangly earrings and these leather boots. Barbarian came in, looked across from the room or the room like. 30 feet away, kind of to the side, but his eyes perked up. He's like, ooh, who's the new girl? And then we had to tell him. And then he sat down and shut up for a little while. So there's that story, and there's the Gene Anderson story that you've told, and there's the story about him filming Body Slam and his wife. <laughs> Was the Barbarian just the source of constant comedic stories and anecdotes yes he would because he was he was such a great guy and but at the same time when he would say something that would that would look belie the barbaric look of him the giant you know muscle-bound beast with the weird haircut and the face paint and he's like oh who's the new girl or you know oh gene please don't hurt me no more but anyway, where I was going with that was Starcade 86 was a scaffold with the Road Warriors. Starcade 87 was the scaffold with the Rock and Roll. And then Starcade 88, we actually got to have a good match with the original Midnight, which was basically the one and only pay per view match that we got to have in that whole program before it got cut off. But it still wasn't, the presentation had already been watered down and. We didn't get the finish that we wanted because we wanted to put them over, but they insisted we go over and then they get heat after. So it. Who insisted? Was it Jim Crockett Jr.? Um, yeah, by that point, it was Jimmy because they'd fired Dusty and Jimmy was the interim booker. He wanted to keep us and he didn't, he didn't like the original Midnight team because he didn't think much of Randy Rose's work. And as a number one. <laughs> At that point in time with the roster we had, Randy Rose's work was comparable at, at minimum. And secondly, I don't care if it was goddamn Cheetah the Chimpanzee. The only reason that it worked was because it was the original Midnight Express, for fuck's sake. And he didn't, and that's why we ended up in the loser leave match where he was going to get rid of Randy. And then Dennis said, well, fuck this. They're doing it again. And he quit first. And then there we went. But nevertheless, um, so I would have rather finished the program with the horseman to answer, finish answering the question than they asked the one you were going to ask because we had just started with the horseman. We didn't even get to have a big 
big match, title match, whatever, on something that would be recorded like a pay-per-view or a television program, live clash, whatever, to where we could have that. We just, it just started drawing fucking money at the house shows and we were making the biggest checks we had made, including uh, the, the rock and roll program, because we were getting paid not only as main eventers against the horsemen, but also because everything else was dreck. Whereas in, except for Flair and Luger, whereas in 86, they were spreading more of the money around because everything was hot. The match at Starcade 88 against the original Midnight Express, was that the best match the two teams had together? Were there house show matches that were better? Um, I, we didn't have that many house show matches. That's what I was trying to remember. If I even remember yeah. you guys having another straight up tag match. And remember that period of time was also where TBS decided, well, we don't want to spend the money to fly the managers to the house shows. We're going to do like Vince used to do and just have them on TV. And so the Midnights had a couple of matches and house shows that me and Paul E weren't at. And people didn't give a shit because that was another thing. That was the fucking program. And they didn't understand that. And then me and Paul, getting incredible amounts of heat with the rest of the managers, said, we'll fly ourselves. And they said, oh, no, we don't want you to do that. And then we started showing up in places we could drive. If you guys had started flying yourselves, talk about heat. How much heat would you guys have with a Gary Hart? I'm trying to think who else was still there oh, at he, that time. He, they would have all, Paul Jones, um, because remember, Paul was now getting in the office because George Scott was about to come in. So he was there until George left and he followed. And I'd like to say Gary Hart would have understood our youthful enthusiasm and the fact that it was business because that was the fucking program. But he probably would have wanted to cut us just for the then, you know, it, may, it would have made everybody else look bad. But fuck it. So the whole thing died. And this was the drive through ladies and gentlemen. Well, there you go. Hey, hey, we did two shows on the experience, so we can only do a half a show here, and people shouldn't complain, right? They shouldn't, but they will. And, uh, and we have so much more to go on this show. I'm just joshing. We have so much more to go. You had to say that. Now we have to think about how much more we have to go. But there's so much to talk about. We have a big conversation later on with Tim Hornbaker. 